It has been a life lived in conflict. Mohammed Abu Rudin was born in northern Syria 10 years ago as the country started to fall apart. With each year, things have gotten worse. Mohammed says he used to live in a house and go to school. Both were destroyed. Now, that story isn't just one of many, it's one of millions. The conflict in Syria has meant suffering on an industrial scale. A British-based group, the Syrian Observatory of Human Rights, estimates that as of this month, more than 2.1 million have been injured and more than 594,000 killed. They have been dispossessed of their lands and homes. The United Nations Special Envoy for Syria briefed the UN Security Council Monday. He called the Syrian people among the greatest victims of this century after a decade of bombings, gassings and starvation. They have been injured, maimed and killed in every way imaginable. Their corpses even desecrated. The conflict started at the beginning of March 2011. The southern city of Dara is sometimes called the cradle of the revolution. Fifteen students were arrested for anti-government graffiti. Within days, protests exploded. Within months, defectors created the Free Syrian Army. And by 2013, refugees were pouring out of the country in every direction. 5.5 million Syrians are displaced inside the country. Another 6 million left. They have fled Syria, often only to face further poverty and discrimination, or worse, perishing at sea in search of refuge. This was a rally in northwestern Syria last week to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the uprising. It's one of only two small regions still controlled by rebel forces. Turkish troops control an area in the north and Kurdish forces in the northeast. But government forces now control close to 70 percent of the country. Propped up by Russian troops, President Bashar al-Assad has regained much of the territory he'd lost. There has been a calm in the fighting in recent months, but many expect Assad to make a move on rebel-controlled areas. The only question some say is when. Mike Armstrong, Global News. Millions of Syrians have left their country since the start of the conflict 10 years ago. Included in that wave, more than 80,000 who settled here in Canada. As Mike Armstrong explains, they may have found safety in this country, but the stress of what's happening back home hasn't gone away. Today we are preparing uh, Cuba. They are thousands of kilometers from the conflict, but it is never far from their thoughts. These women are from Syria, now living in Canada, working at a catering company, Les Filles Fatouche. Its specialty is Syrian cuisine. Asked how often they think about what's going on back in Syria, Norma Ganem says every day. And then corrects herself. Every moment, she says. While the fighting in Syria has calmed in recent months, the situation for people on the ground hasn't improved. In some regions, unemployment is running as high as 80 and 90 percent. That, as the cost of everything, has skyrocketed. La guerra est une catastrophe. The news about Syria, our Pixvalian says, is hard to watch. Non, quelquefois je pleure. She says it sometimes makes her cry and that she doesn't see a solution coming. We import. Now, the company was started by Adele Tarzabachi. She's been importing soap and spices from Syria for years. When refugees started arriving in Canada, she wanted to help them. Well, it's also helping the families these women left behind. They almost all send about a quarter of the money they make back to Syria, even though it's hard. They need the money, even though they need the money. They are like obliged to think of their family because they feel guilty that they leave them there. Tarzabachi was raised in the city of Aleppo. Today, much of it is in ruins. When she calls people back in Syria, she often hears tears at the other end of the line and people pleading for help to move to Canada. The 10th anniversary of the start of the conflict may be a time for reflection, Tarzabachi says, but it doesn't feel like a time for optimism. Before we had like a bit of hope. Right now, it's even that bit of hope, we don't see it. Tarzabachi says many of the Syrian refugees around the world planned on someday moving back, even some who came to Canada. With every year that passes, that dream, she says, is dying. Mike Armstrong, Global News, Montreal.